So one of the things that bothers me now in society, and, and it has everything to do with music, um, and the agenda that's being pushed out right now, which is, you know, women wanting men to take care of them and like young girls listening to all these, all this music about, can you buy me a Birkin bag and can you do this and can you do that for me? I'm so annoyed with that. Um, if you're broke and you don't have the things that you're wanting for a man to, to supply for you, you need to go and get it yourself first. And then say, hey, or can you meet me in the middle? Um, I don't know what happened in society to make anyone feel like anyone owes them anything. If there's anything that annoys me and that makes me want to strangle people is a, a, a no having nothing type of person that's looking to take everything else from everyone else, like people that actually worked hard for their things. I don't understand what is it in their mind that makes them think that they deserve that. Whether they have a big butt, big boobs, they're gorgeous, they are exotic, they are talented, whatever the case is. Not, for me, not, none of that warrants saying, you need to do this for me. And if you can't do that for me, then I'm not going to be with you. To me, it's extremely ignorant thinking. Um, I don't want anything to do with it. It's really gross. Um, for me, I, I have dated men that do make more money than I do. Um, however, I still am able to pay my bills. I live in a fantastic place in uptown Charlotte. If anyone knows anything about uptown, you know, it's, it's quite expensive to live here. Um, but again, I, I pay all my bills with no issue. I'm never late. And, you know, for me to want that in a future relationship, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting the same thing that you're already bringing to the table. So I said all of that to say, make sure that whatever it is that you're asking of someone else or demanding of them or saying that in order to be with you, they have to have that. Make sure that you have that yourself. Check yourself. Number eight, go through the hurt. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge that you're hurt. Feel it, sit in that, and know that it's logical and it's okay, um, and that we all go through that. Um, just remind yourself that it's a moment in time. Remind yourself of all the other moments that you've had that were very difficult, that you got over and you moved past. Um, yeah. Um, also, I find that acknowledging the good times, just thanking them, and releasing them is so much more of a gentle and kind way to handle yourself and to um, have compassion for yourself. And that's another point that I'll get on in just a second. Number nine, focus on yourself. You know, get busy doing all the things that you used to do or had wanted to do but couldn't do because you were so busy in the relationship. Um, for me, when I was with my ex, um, he's Dominican. So a lot of the time when, when we were living together, a lot of my time was spent in the kitchen cooking and in the uh, house cleaning. It was a whole lot of that. And I got to a place where I recognized I'm not, as, I'm not your wife. Um, and so we need to kind of set some boundaries here. Um, it's important that in a relationship, you're not giving the person husband or wife benefits when they're not your husband or your wife. Um, of course, you have to give them a taste so that they know whether or not you're someone who they would want to invest the rest of their lives with. That's natural. And that's a whole nother video for a whole, whole nother time. Um, number 10, don't hold a grudge. That's, that's weight on you and stress on you that you're giving to yourself. Um, I find that for me, when I wanted to get angry about the fact that, oh, it didn't work out and, oh, he wasted my time or whatever, I don't even let myself think of it that way of, oh, he wasted my time. Um, this was not a loss. It was a lesson. I learned lots of lessons in this relationship, and I know he did too, and I, I definitely feel like we both have come out of it as better people. Um, the breakup was super cordial. Hey, it's just not going to work out, and I'm okay with that. 
And he and I both are happy people single and happy people in a relationship. And unfortunately, we got to a place where, where we weren't really happy in the relationship. Could be because we were busy making our own selves super happy. And that's okay. Um, let's see here. Next. Number 11. I think I already said that. But the revenge. Don't don't get revenge. Just, just, just don't do it. I'm the type of person that in the past when I did that, after I did it, I felt horrible. I would be the one crying and feeling disgusted with myself and just nasty. Like, what a low self-esteem thing to do. People who love themselves genuinely, um, they don't do things to hurt other people. You know, we, we all know hurt people hurt people. And loving people love people. Kind people are kind to other people. Um, and in the book that I'm writing, I say... Uh, you know, once you stop judging yourself, you'll st you'll be able to stop judging others. And uh, it's very true. I, I treat myself with love, kindness, and compassion every day. Um, I don't do a whole lot of negative talk anymore. I used to have a lot of that up here. Uh, but, you know, that's a learned thing. You have to learn to stop doing that. Also, number 11, nope, number 12. Don't speak negatively about them. It, it, it does nothing but create more and more negative energy. And it takes up negative a, a space in your mind where positivity could be. You know, where you could be busy moving on and doing the work. Working on yourself. Focusing on you. Just don't, don't even do it to yourself. Um, I, I would call that um, abuse. Uh, you know, it's an act of violence to yourself. That's self-abuse. Um, yeah, just don't do it. Uh, let's see. And of course that goes for Facebook. You know, when, when people talk negatively about anybody on Facebook that everyone knows and they're doing it in a way to get attention and to draw attention to other people to say, hey, look what this person did to me. That's also victim behavior. You don't want to be a victim. Um, that's extremely unattractive. Um, it, it just, it just shows low self-esteem when you do those types of things. Um, and it puts everyone in your business and we have to remember that how other people think about us and what they feel about us is none of our business. It's none of your business. And by creating those types of dr dramatic situations, you're putting people in your business and giving them the right to um, to your emotions and, and things that they, that they don't deserve to have. Not everybody deserves everything. So uh, that's that. Number 13. If you don't already have a therapist or a life coach, I would definitely suggest uh, doing that. Um, I have a life coach and a therapist. I think I mentioned that earlier. And I'm so grateful. I am really becoming the best version of myself. And every day, I'm just like, who are you? I never, ever imagined that I would be here. It, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, number 14, again, be kind, gentle, and compassionate with yourself. You know, we think about how we treat our friends when they are, are broken down and are sad. And for those of you who have children, when your child is hurt and, and broken down, you don't shut them down. You don't, you know, push them out of the way. You, you care about them and, and you're there for them. So the same way that you would be there for your child, be there, be there for your inner child. Be there for yourself. Um, being loving and patient with yourself. Definitely patient with yourself. Um, number 15, actually I already spoke about that. So number 16, reclaim your independence. Okay. You know, get out there, cut your hair, color your hair, do the thing that your partner didn't want you to do the hair color, buy the car, um, buy the, in my case, it was buying a table that he didn't want me to have. <laughs> and then after I actually bought it, when we had broken up the first time, 
the second time, the second go round in our relationship, he loved the table. And I was like, you told me you didn't want me to get the table, but whatever. At that point, I had already gotten to a place where I was like, I'm doing whatever the heck I want to do because I can. And it made me happy. So I hope that today I have given you some helpful tips of how to get over the breakup. If you have any questions, um, definitely leave them in the, in the comment section. And I would love to reach out um, and give you my advice. I'm actually studying um, now to become a life coach. So I, I have found my passion, finally, and um, it feels great. And if anybody's wondering, because I know how a lot of times women are, how we, how we do, um, this hair is like a four day or three day wash and go. And it, of course it's, I shouldn't say of course, but it's my real hair. It's not a wig or anything. Um, and yeah, it's a wash and go. And I used, I forgot the, the gel that I used, but it, anyways, if you want to know that, just ask that in the questions and I'll, um, I'll answer that. I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day and, um, yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. This was my first video, um, doing a self-help video. So it is a little bit all over the place, but, uh, don't worry in the future. I, I'll just get better and better. Have a great day.